Now let's look at the mechanics of swallowing, or more specifically, the different phases of swallowing. Now there's going to be three different phases uh, of swallowing, and it really depends on the location that the food or bolus is going to be located. So let's take a look at this, and phase one, well, let's just write these down. So phases of swallowing, Phase one is going to be your voluntary phase. Phase two is going to be pharyngeal phase. And phase three is going to end up being esophageal. Esophageal phase, okay? So let's look at this. And let's just see what happens in the voluntary phase. Now, this one, voluntary, means you've got control over it. And it begins actually in the cerebral cortex. So we're, we're talking the brain here, okay? More specifically, we're looking at your temporal lobes. That's your primary location, as well as the motor cortex of the frontal lobe. So that's where swallowing really is initiated, okay? So as you... Uh, intake or ingest food, okay, now we start the process of mastication, which is chewing, okay? So now you have your teeth and your tongue that is manipulating the ingested food. And when you're chewing it or masticating the food, that allows it to mix with saliva and it forms something called a bolus. So um, let me just kind of go down here, okay? So you form a bolus, okay? And that's just the ingested, chewed up food mixed with saliva, okay? Part of the mixing phase is your tongue manipulates the food in your mouth, okay? And it kind of moves it around so you're, you're chewing it. And what it does, just prior to initiating the voluntary portion of swallowing is your tongue uh, pushes the food superiorly or up against your hard palate. So it's pushing it up and back. So it's pushing it against your hard palate and directing it towards the oropharynx. So it goes up to the hard palate and oral pharynx. Okay, so here's the hard palate on this picture, okay? So the tongue pushes the food up against this one and it directs it back and it goes to the oral pharynx, which is this region, okay? So that's where we're going to do. And there are, um, once the food gets into the oral pharynx, what it leads up to is it stimulates nerve receptors in the oral pharynx, which then leads us to the next phase. And the next phase, what we're looking at on here is going to be, let me uh, move this up, is going to be your pharyngeal phase, okay? So that's gonna be the pharyngeal phase, and this is where the bolus is within the oral pharynx. Now. We have sensory receptors within the oral pharynx, and what it does, it sends afferent signals to the swallowing center of your medulla oblongata. So, afferent sensory to swallowing center of your medulla. Okay, and what happens at this point is now we have efferent or motor fibers that leave. So now we have efferent motor leaving the medulla oblongata. And what it does is it goes to the motor function. So we're raising up the soft palate and the uvula. So soft palate. and uvula. 
So raises, I should put that, raises the soft palate and uvula. Now why, why is it doing that? So here we've got, let me do a different color. So here we've got our soft palate and uvula, okay? So it's gonna raise that up. Well, if this last little bit here is the uvula, can you see how it's blocking off the nasal pharynx? So raising it up and elevating the uvula blocks off passage of food from entering into your nasal pharynx. And the only ones that are really competent at overcoming this are, you know, fifth graders at lunchtime laughing and they can make milk squirt out of their nose, okay? So that's going to be part of it. We also have motor. So this is motor for this one. Then we have, uh, let me go back to black. Then we have motor going to the larynx and raises it up. And when the larynx raises up, it allows for the epiglottis to close off or cover the inlet to the larynx. So, uh, did I say uh, esophagus? It's epiglottis, can't remember what I said. So it's epiglottis. Epiglottis closes off inlet to larynx. Okay, now we want that to prevent food you know, here's the bolus. This has to be closed off to prevent food from going down the windpipe, okay? The, the going through the larynx, getting into the trachea. Food and water going that direction is really not conducive to life, okay? So you don't wanna choke. That's called aspiration, okay? And if you get into speech therapy or occupational therapy, someone has a stroke or something along that line and they're in the hospital one of the things that they have to observe the patient is they have to observe them uh, eating and drinking things because if they cough or clear their throat during the eating phase or drinking phase that lets them know that they are aspirating a little bit of fluid into the larynx and so forth which then stimulates that cough reflex and and wanting to clear your throat. So that's something that has to be overcome on this one. Um, then once the food's, again, back in the oral pharynx, then you've got your constrictors, pharyngeal constrictors. Okay, this is a, like that round tube here. Those begin to constrict, pushing it down towards the esophagus, which then leads into the next phase which is going to be the esophageal phase, okay? So now the bolus has passed the larynx. It's passed, gone, th get through the laryngeal pharynx um, on this one. And the esophagus is a tube that goes between the pharynx and the stomach. So this is the passageway for the food. And you have two sphincters, you have your upper, or your superior esophageal sphincter, and you have your inferior esophageal sphincter. Normally, they are both closed, okay, because you don't want food or contents from your stomach coming up. That's known as regurgitation, vomiting, after a long party weekend, dry heaves, okay, all of that, okay. So those are normally closed on this one. And when food enters that region, the, esoph the superior esophageal sphincter relaxes, allowing for passage of the bolus to enter the esophagus. And then the esophagus moves the bolus down towards the stomach by peristaltic motion. So here we're squeezing it and squeezing it and squeezing it, so it's pushing it down. And that transition to get from the swallowing, the beginning of the pharynx through the esophagus to the uh, stomach is five to eight seconds. Okay, that's how long it typically takes for the bolus to pass. And if you have a stethoscope at home, what is uh, an interesting little experiment to do is, you know, put on the stethoscope, put it over your stomach, eat a piece of bread, just a small bite of it, swallow, 
and count down the time and then all of a sudden you're going to hear a lot of gurgling going on and that's food entering into the stomach. This is even more impressive if you've got a kid brother or sister that's really young and let them hear, uh, let them put the stethoscope in their ears and listen to their own stomach. I did this with my niece and their eyes get real big and have them swallow a piece of bread in about five to eight seconds they hear this loud gurgling going on and you know it makes you laugh a little bit and kind of freaks them out but it's kind of cool okay so as the bolus goes down then as it reaches the inferior esophageal sphincter that one will relax allowing passage of the bolus to enter into the stomach okay and at which point this uh, sphincters uh, contract again preventing from movement so that's the mechanics or the different phases of swallowing. Next thing we're going to look at, uh, since now the bolus is now in the stomach, uh, now we're going to look at what the stomach is doing and specifically we're going to look at gastric secretions. I'm not going to go into the muscles, <coughs> muscles too much or the churning. We did more of that last semester. I want to focus a little bit more on the gastric secretions and what happens at that point. Stay tuned.